former Taipei Mayor Ko Wenge detained in Living Mall corruption case. Starlix founder Captain Chong known for hands-on approach. Team Asobi's Astrobot launches with 6-meter tall robot at Taipei event. Boy arrested after four killed in Georgia school shooting. Chinese and African leaders hold a summit. Grenfell Tower fire inquiry blames UK authorities. Ugandan Olympic runner dies after being burned by her partner. Venezuela's leader moves Christmas to boost support. Hello, I'm Johnny. Thank you for joining us on Funny News. It's Friday, September 6th, and here are your top stories. And for today's Taiwan news, the Taipei District Court ordered the detention of former Mayor Ko Wenzhe and former Deputy Mayor Peng Junshen in connection with the Living Mall case. Both are accused of bribery and profiteering under the Anti-Corruption Act. The court cited serious suspicion of the crimes and the risk of evidence tampering and collusion as reasons for the detention. Star Lux Airlines founder Zhang Guowei, a pilot himself, is known for personally responding to customer inquiries online. However, he recently emphasized that flight attendants and applicants must take the job seriously, warning that those simply aiming to travel the world will be rejected. Sony Interactive Entertainment's team Asobi will release Astrobot on September 6th. To celebrate, a 6-meter tall Astrobot figure has been set up at the CityLink A&B buildings near Nangang Station, Taipei. The event features interactive zones, inviting fans and players to join in the fun. And in global news, a 14-year-old boy will be charged with murder after four people were killed and nine injured in a shooting at a Georgia high school. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation said two students and two teachers died in Wednesday's attack at Appalachia High School in Winter Barrow County. Cole Gray, a student at the school, was arrested by two officers on campus. He will be tried as an adult. It has emerged that the FBI interviewed him last year after receiving anonymous tips about online threats to commit a school shooting, but agents did not arrest him at the time. Officers first received reports of a shooting at the school, which has around 1,900 students, at approximately 10.20 local time. Within minutes, law enforcement arrived on the scene, along with two school resource officers assigned to the school, who immediately encountered the suspect. The sheriff said, the suspect immediately surrendered. He gave up, got on the ground, and the officers took him into custody. Officials stated that no motive had been identified and that law enforcement did not know of any specific targets at this point. According to the FBI, investigators had visited the suspect in May 2023 and interviewed him and his father about online threats, which included pictures of guns. Dozens of African leaders gather in Beijing on Thursday for a summit highlighting China's growing influence on the continent, which it hopes will be a key ally in countering the U.S.-led global water. Chinese President Xi Jinping promised the leaders billions of dollars in loans and private investments over the next three years and proposed elevating relations with all African countries that have diplomatic ties with China to the strategic level. Since the forum's founding in 2000, China has become a major player in Africa. Chinese companies have invested heavily in mining resources needed for its industry, and its development banks have provided loans to build railways, roads, and other infrastructure as part of Xi's Belt and Road Initiative. African leaders have welcomed China's assistance but are advocating for a closer alignment of aid with the continent's development goals. They aim to industrialize their economies and expand agricultural exports to reduce a trade deficit with China, which has become Sub-Saharan Africa's largest bilateral trading partner. Xi announced that China would eliminate tariffs on products from most of the world's poorest countries, including 33 in Africa, as part of an expansion of existing tariff exemptions. A public inquiry into the devastating 2017 Grenfell Tower fire in London on Wednesday blamed the disaster on failings by the government, the construction industry, and especially the firms involved in fitting the building's exterior with flammable cladding. 72 people died when the fire tore through the 23-story social housing block in one of the wealthiest areas of West London during the early hours of June 14, 2017. It was Britain's deadliest residential building fire since World War II. 
In its final report, the inquiry placed most of the responsibility for the disaster on the companies involved in the maintenance and refit of the apartment tower, as well as on authorities and firms that dishonestly marketed combustible cladding as safe. It also criticized the government, Kensington and Chelsea local authority, the industry, regulatory groups, specific individuals, and an ill-prepared fire brigade for years of inaction on fire safety in high-rise buildings. Since the fire, Survivors and relatives have demanded justice and criminal charges for those responsible. Although British police have stated that 58 individuals and 19 firms are under investigation, prosecutions are still years away due to the complexity of the case and the need to review the inquiry's report. Ugandan Olympic athlete Rebecca Cheptegei, 33, has died at a Kenyan hospital where she was being treated after 80% of her body was burned in an attack by her partner. A spokesperson at Moy Teaching and Refro Hospital confirmed that Chapter Guy passed away early Monday morning after all her organs failed. She competed in the women's marathon at the Paris Olympics less than a month before the attack, finishing in 44th place. Police commander reported that Chapter Guy's partner had bought a jerrican of petrol, poured it on her, and set her ablaze during a disagreement on Sunday. Sheptegai's parents said their daughter had bought land in Transenzoia to be near the county's many athletic training centers. A report filed by the local chief states that the couple was heard arguing over the land where her house was built before the attack. The Uganda Athletics Federation eulogized Sheptegai on the social platform X, writing, We are deeply saddened to announce the passing of our athlete, Rebecca Sheptegai, who tragically fell victim to domestic violence early this morning. As a federation, we condemn such acts and call for justice. May her soul rest in peace. Uganda Olympic Committee President Donald Rukari described the attack as a cowardly and senseless act that has led to the loss of a great athlete. It's already beginning to smell a lot like Christmas. That's the verdict of Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro. At least, who has announced he is moving the holiday from December to October this year. It's a novel approach to the age-old pastime of politicians trying to win favor with the public, especially after a divisive and hotly contested election, followed by a crackdown on dissent. More than five weeks after the election, Maduro said Monday he would move the holiday and create a season filled with peace, happiness, and security. Maduro said Monday night during his weekly television show, It's September, and it already smells like Christmas. That's why this year, as a way of paying tribute to you all and in gratitude to you all, I'm going to decree an early Christmas for October 1st. Maduro's actions since the election have been less than festive, with critics accusing him of brutal repression against his political opponents. Hours before the Christmas announcement, an arrest warrant was issued for opposition presidential candidate Edmundo Gonzalez. This is not the first time Maduro has moved Christmas for political purposes, he did it during the COVID-19 pandemic. Not everyone in the country is convinced that the move will lead to an increase in good cheer. The answer for yesterday was B, groundbreaking. The scientist groundbreaking research has changed the way we understand climate change. Did you answer correctly? Now let's delve into the news of Venezuela's leader moves Christmas to boost support. Number one, novel, 新奇的,与众不同的. The scientists came up with a novel approach to solve the problem. Number two, dissent, 不同意,意义. There was strong dissent among the committee members regarding the new policy. Number three, contest, 争辩,质疑. The lawyer decided to contest the charges in court. Next, we have a multiple choice question for everyone to practice. Which answer would you choose? You can write your answer in the comment section. The correct answer will be announced next week. And that's all for today's Funday News. Be sure to tune in to Funday News from Monday to Friday and click the link below to join Funday for free. I'm Johnny Wu, your host. I'll see you next time.